Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today our video about imaging of pediatric breast. Learning objectives. 1. Discuss the imaging modalities used to evaluate pediatric breast masses. 2. Recognize the imaging features of physiologic neonatal breast development, normal breast development in adolescent, and variants of normal development. 3. Review the spectrum of pediatric breast disease, common benign breast masses, uncommon benign breast masses, and malignant breast masses. 4. Discuss management of pediatric breast disease. Introduction Prevalence of breast masses in adolescent girls is 3.2%. While the overwhelming majority of pediatric breast masses are benign, they may be a significant source of stress for patients and parents. Many pediatric breast masses can be diagnosed based on history and physical examination findings and managed with reassurance. When necessary, imaging can play a helpful role in diagnosis with ultrasound as the mainstay imaging modality. The majority of breast masses in the pediatric population don't necessitate biopsy or surgical excision. Familiarity with the spectrum of common and uncommon benign and malignant masses in the pediatric population is essential to recognize pathologic conditions and guide management. Imaging modalities 1. Ultrasound is primary diagnostic tool in pediatric population, widely available, lack of ionizing radiation, and high sensitivity in dense fibroglandular tissue. Number two, mammography, generally contraindicated due to ionizing radiation, decrease the sensitivity secondary to dense fibroglandular tissue can be useful in rare cases to characterize calcifications. Number 3. MRI It is not often used and not well studied in pediatric population. It is helpful for determining extent of disease or for characterizing chest wall lesions. In this video, we will talk about normal pediatric breast development and variants, including 1. Neonatal breast development 2. Neonatal breast enlargement 3. Tunnel grading system stages of development 4. Premature telarc 5. Asymmetric breast development 6. Gynecomastia 7. Bolan syndrome Number 1. Neonatal breast development Fetal breast development begins as early as 6 weeks of age. The milk line extends from the axilla to the groin and develops from the proliferation of mammary specific ectodermal elements. The milk line completely atrophies except at the fourth intercostal space where breast development occurs. Neonatal breast enlargement is benign proliferation of glandular tissue likely occurs in response to placental estrogens. Presence in the first week of life independent of biological sex. It is unilateral or bilateral. Galactorrhea can also occur in 5% of neonates from prolactin stimulation. Number 2. Neonatal breast enlargement Neonatal breast enlargement is a normal finding. Although the diagnosis can generally be made clinically, breast ultrasound may be performed to ease parental anxiety. Management Conservative With reassurance that the finding should spontaneously resolve by 6 months of age. The neonatal breast bud should never be sampled by any technique. Management is the same in the presence or absence of nipple discharge. Image A is a four-week-old infant boy with bilateral subareolar masses and galactorrhea. Ultrasound image demonstrate 
and enlarge it and oval shaped subarular breast but the contralateral breast demonstrates similar findings image b is a 10 days old newborn girl presented with enlarged right breast ultrasound images demonstrate right greater than left heterogeneous retroilular tissue compatible with neonatal breast enlargement linear hypocoic regions asterisk represent branched ducts number three sea lark it is the onset of normal pubertal breast development it occurs with the coordinated interactions of many hormones driven by a surge in estrogens and progesterone normally occur at 8 to 10 years of age however earlier onset is documented in black females and females with body mass index in the above 85th percentile the tunnel grading system is used to describe the clinical appearance of the developing breast stage 1 clinical findings prepubertal ultrasound findings small ill-defined hypoechoic retroalular tissue stage 2 Clinical findings, enlargement of areola, palpable subareolar bud, ultrasound findings, heterogeneous predominantly hypoechoic star-shaped retroalular tissue. Stage 3, clinical findings, further enlargement and elevation of breast tissue, ultrasound findings, central hypoechoic spider-shaped tissue, Hyperechoic glandular tissue extends beyond areola. Stage 4 Clinical findings Secondary mount Projection of areola and babilla above level of breast. Ultrasound findings Increased glandular tissue. Stage 5 Mature breast contour Ultrasound finding Hyperechoic glandular tissue and increased fatty tissue component. Number 4. Premature Celark Premature Celark is the early onset of breast development before 7 to 8 years of age. It is either idiopathic premature Celark or central precocious puberty. Idiopathic premature Celark is the presence of glandular breast tissue without development of other secondary sexual characteristics typically occurs in young children aged from 1 to 4 years. But central precocious puberty is premature breast development in addition to other secondary sexual characteristics, for example, axillary or pubic hair. Ultrasound imaging can confirm developing breast tissue. Other imaging may be warranted to exclude hormonally active adrenal or gonadal neoplasms. This image shows two-year-old girl with bilateral breast enlargement. Ultrasound images demonstrate bilateral retroalular glandular tissue without a discrete mass consistent with bilateral premature celark. Rule of ultrasound is to confirm the presence of developing breast tissue. Reassurance and continued surveillance is typically appropriate clinical management. Number 5. Asymmetric breast development. Background. This can occur from infancy to adolescence. Most pronounced during puberty. Most cases are physiologic. Diagnosis is often made clinically. Discrepancy in breast size can be alarming for patient and parents. Ultrasound may be requested for reassurance. Ultrasound evaluation should include imaging of both breasts with a focus on identifying features of normal breast development. Understanding of the classic imaging findings at different tunnel stages can be extremely helpful. This image shows 8 years old girl who presented with breast asymmetry. Ultrasound image shows tunnel stage 1 development of the right breast and tunnel stage 3 
Development of the left breast. Number six, gynecomastia. There is a development of mammary glandular tissue in the male breast. It occurs in 30% to 60% of healthy boys. It is unilateral or bilateral, symmetrical or asymmetrical, and most common in puberty. Causes Gynecomastia is caused by an imbalance in estrogen and testosterone levels. Transient increased estrogen levels at the beginning of puberty can stimulate breast tissue, while rising testosterone levels preclude the development of terminal duct lobular units. Increased estrogen levels in the setting of adrenocortical or testicular tumors, liver disease, hyperthyroidism, Kleinfelter syndrome, drugs as exogenous estrogens, anabolic steroids, tricyclic antidepressant, corticosteroids, and cannabis. Clinical examination. Concentric mobile tissue nodule palpated at the nipple area complex. Ultrasound imaging mode of choice in adolescent boys. Appearance is varied, but the most common finding is a hypoechoic disc-shaped mass beneath the nipple surrounded by fatty tissue. A flame-shaped hypoechoic focus in retroalular tissue may appear similar to tunnel stage 2 breast development in adolescent girls. Ultrasound seen collapse in a 12 years old boy Demonstrate right greater than left retroalular fibroglandular tissue compatible with bilateral gynecomastia. Number 7. Boland syndrome. Background. It is rare syndrome characterized by congenital unilateral partial or total absence of the pectoralis major, often associated with ipsilateral brachysyndactyly, and other chest wall findings. Radiologic features, by ultrasound, there is absent pectoralis major, asymmetric breast development. By chest radiograph, asymmetric hyperlucency of the affected chest wall. And CT is helpful for demonstrating other chest wall abnormalities. Chest wall findings, variable. Partial or total absence of the pectoralis muscle, absence of the pectoralis minor, absent or atrophic ipsilateral second through fifth ribs, ipsilateral breast findings as mild hypoplasia to ablasia, hypoplastic elevated nipple and areola, absent or supernumerary nipples. This is a bilateral breast ultrasound image in an 11 years old girl with Boland syndrome. A. Ultrasound image of the right breast demonstrates absence of pectoralis muscle. Ribs are denoted by arrowheads. B. Ultrasound image of contralateral left breast demonstrates normal pectoralis muscle and asymmetric breast development. Ribs are denoted by arrowheads. The chest radiograph in a 14 years old girl with Boland syndrome note hyperlucency of the left chest wall, the affected side. 